Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you and welcome to Unshackle Ministries here in the city of Paramount. And I'm um, just excited about everyone that's here and everyone that's watching today. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited because it's Mother's Day. Amen. A day we get to celebrate our moms. Amen. Amen. And um, so I'm calling this a Mother's Day revival. Praise the Lord. And um, so we're gonna we're gonna have a wonderful service today. God's word is gonna be strong and mighty, and I believe and pray, give encouragement to, to all the moms. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's open in a word of prayer, and then we're gonna worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day for this time that you've given us to come and worship you, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Father God, that you are above all and before all, Lord God. So we just praise you today, Lord God, and we worship you and we come to celebrate you, Lord God, as you have blessed us, Lord God, with, with our moms, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for this, Lord, and, and I just pray that you touch every mother, Father God, that's out there, Father God, and, and, and and the ones that are struggling and the ones that are, you know, that, that are not struggling, Lord, just bless them in a very special way. Let them know how important they are, Father God. And most of all, Lord God, I pray that you just touch each and every person here today and those that will be watching or hearing through the platforms of Facebook and, and YouTube and Instagram, Lord, touch them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Help us this day. Let the Holy Spirit just take control and charge over our service in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's just worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Praise your holy name, Father God. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer 
Lord. Holy Spirit, come into this place. Fill this place with your glory, Father God. Father God, and we just receive the healing right now, Father God, and receive the freedom in Christ Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, and we praise your holy name, Father God, for all things, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God. We glorify you, Father God, and we worship you, Father God, and we adore you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for your peace, Father God, that surpasses all understanding, Father. Amen? Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You love Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, you're in the right place to express your love for Jesus today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, God has a wonderful word for us today, and I pray that your hearts will be open and receptive to what God has for you today. Amen. Um, always, it's always good to yield to the Holy Spirit during times of reading the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit will speak directly into your heart, specifically where you're at. Amen. Amen. And God is so awesome that we can preach one message and it can affect thousands or hundreds in glory right where they're at in glory. Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's a, another uh, Mother's Day, and uh, I really praise God that we get to celebrate this wonderful day with all these wonderful moms that the Lord has put together here. And uh, they are very special ladies, and God has blessed you with very um, special children. Amen? Yes. But you know that just having children is not the thing that makes you a mother. Amen? It's what comes with the whole package. Hello? Amen. So, and it comes with a lot. And God has given you a heavy, heavy cross to bear. Amen? But I know that he's pleased with you moms to continue to raise up your children in the ways of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. First of all, I would like to give a word, a shout out to uh, my cousin Jeffrey, who's um, still healing, but recovering. Yeah. Um, we went to go visit him in Palm Springs this past, um, I think it was Thursday. We went to go visit him in the hospital there, and um, he's, he was looking good. He's doing good, amen? amen. And um, he's getting better and stronger. Um, matter of fact, that day they were going to take him to a, a, a rehab a place to help him in his recovery. Um, but I think if he won't stay there the full two weeks, he'll, he'll end up leaving sooner because he's ready to go, amen? amen. Hallelujah. So God, God heard our prayers and the prayers of many people in his family for a miracle for God to touch Jeffrey. And he did. Amen. Amen. And just like he touched Brother Javier. And Amen. now he's back here dancing and hopping for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Keep uh, Sister Edith Ann in prayer. Um, she had a little, a little um, issues in her, in her home. Um, you know, electrical things, amen. And um, so she had to try to fix it, you know, and she was trying to fix and get everything ready so she could be in service today, but she couldn't get her electricity back to working, amen. But uh, let's keep her in prayer, amen, and let her know that we miss her, give her a call, wish her a happy Mother's Day, and as we all do here, amen. amen. Praise God. Um, also, everybody remember that. Um, we have um, Facebook Live every Sunday, and it goes on there, and you know, you can watch it, or you can, and uh, you know, how many friends do you have on Facebook? Anybody have friends on Facebook? I know you do. You know, you have family. Well, don't be ashamed of your church. Don't be ashamed of your pastor. Share the word. Amen. You know, if you're not gonna talk to them about God, you can end up in the place of Esther. Amen. Maybe God has called you for a time as this. Amen. Amen. And if you won't do it, God will bring somebody else to share the word of God with them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't we don't share things about God. We share about every other cotton picking thing. <laughs> but we don't share about the Lord anymore. Share about what God is doing in your life. Share about what Jesus did on the cross for the humanity, for the world. Amen. Make the sacrifice and love God. That's how we show our love and devotion to him, by telling people how much he's done for us. Amen. Yes. Praise God. 
Um, also with YouTube, you can do the same thing once you get it on there. And, I, and I've seen you folks, you know how to share YouTube things. Amen. I've seen you guys share things from there. Amen. Or you can share the message. You know, we try to put it on there every Sunday and, and uh, get it in there so that people can be touched by it. Amen. And uh, we have to do that, folks, so that we can continue to, to uh, let the Lord build his church. Amen. And he's given us a platform. He's given us a voice. But are we using it? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, again, it was happy to see Brother Javier up here and Sister Betty and Sister Martha up here leading us in praise and worship. But today is Mother's Day. How many of you have mothers? Amen. What a silly question, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. But praise God. Mothers are special people. Amen? Amen. My mom went home to be with the Lord a few years ago. But my mom was a special person, not perfect, but a special person, unique person. Amen. Amen. There's days that I think about her and say, I wish I could talk to her, you know, and hear one of her goofy stories. Amen. And, um, and uh, there was a time before my mother became ill that I would call her every night. Amen. I'm not like a mama's boy, though, but I just used to call me mom and talk to her and sometimes I'll talk to her for an hour and just let her talk for the whole time, amen, just to listen, you know, and she would always be good at sharing family historical things. She knew, um, even when she started getting uh, sick with the dementia of someone and she would be forgetful, she would never forget the stories of where she was from, where she came from, the journeys and things like that and, and, the, and the people that got her upset. <laughs> Hallelujah. So those stories are good, you know, and if you got your mom still with you today on earth, appreciate her. Let her know that you love her and you value her. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to share a couple of things that I that I thought. Oh yeah, we have um, prayer every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We pray through um, the Zoom platform that God has given to us. Amen. And we use it strongly and encourage it to be used. Amen. For us to come together and jointly pray to our God. Amen? Amen. If you're, even if you don't join Zoom, that's a church thing. On Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock, you should, you and your family, be in prayer. Hello? And um, if you're not, then you're in the area of not listening to your leaders and being disobedient. Not that, love, you know, the Bible says love does not demand this way, but it's God that's asking us to worship Him and pray and the church has been established to help and guide us and lead us. Amen. So every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, whether you join us on Zoom or whether you're just at home, you know, saying, well, it's my time to relax. It's my time. Okay, well, keep relaxing. It's like the scripture in the Bible that says that the, the man that didn't want to work, you know, and just was happy with what he had. He said one day he rose up in the book of Proverbs says, and all the weeds had come up on his property because he never took care of it. Amen. I believe that's in there not to tell us how to take care of property, but how to pray and take care of our relationship with our family and God. Hello. Amen. Praise God. You love him today. Yeah. Every Wednesday night, we have Bible study here, live Bible study, amen, and we have enough to seat about 80 people here, amen, so on Wednesday nights, you can make it your place to come and have Bible study, amen, another one of those things that we do it for the purpose of edifying the church, helping the church to grow, help her, helping to comfort them in, in the things of the Lord, to edify the church, amen. So it's something that we have to keep going and doing, amen? But it takes people coming together, amen? When Jesus was on the mountain preaching the, 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 the word, amen? The Beatitudes said thousands surrounded him, amen? Because they came to hear the words he was speaking, amen? When Jesus was speaking from a boat, it said thousands came to hear him on the beach, amen? Amen. They surrounded him because he was sharing the word. Amen. Uh, a lot of people get it mixed up and they say, well, I want to go to church because of worship or I go to church because of that. Well, you should come to hear God's word preached to you. Amen. Hello. Amen. 
Give the Lord a praise offering. So today's service is called the Mother's Day Revival. And sometimes, you know, we got to get, you know, the moms, they're the ones that have to get revived. Hello. Amen. Because they go through so much and they're always carrying somebody else's load, especially yes. with your children. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes I always, uh, you know, I, I don't really uh, appreciate the moms that just, oh my goodness, they just spoil their children. They don't teach their sons and daughters how to do this, how to do that. And their sons and daughters go into a world that's growth and they don't know how to do nothing. Amen. And then they want to have a relationship and get hooked up with somebody. Amen. Hopefully in marriage. And they don't know how to take care of that responsibility. Hello. Then you got a spouse or a, a hookup that says, uh, hey, they don't do anything. They want me to do everything for them. Hello? That's part of motherhood, bringing up your kids, teaching them to have responsibility, teaching them how to use the washing machine. Hello? Teaching them how to use the iron. Hello? Teaching them how to help with the gardening and grass and responsibilities of the home. That's bringing them up in the ways of the Lord as well, besides Bible study. Hello? Being responsible. Hello? But a mother's love is her own reckoning. Amen? Praise God. There's a couple of uh, quotes that I want to share with you before we get started. Yeah, one of the first one is by Billy Sunday. He's one of my most favorite preachers. Amen? Of a long time ago. He says, there is more power in a mother's hand than in a king's scepter. And then somebody called Grimaldo's Robin says this, a, wo a mother is a woman who shows you the light when you just see darkness. I don't know about you, but for me, that one really touched me. Amen. Like when I was always going through my little times, Mom would always try to tell me to look at it a different way. Amen? Amen. Hello? And it's so very important and it's so true. Amen? A mother is a woman who shows you light when you just see the dark. Amen. Amen. Sharon James says this, Successful mothers are not the ones that have never struggled. They are the ones that never give up. Man. Despite the struggles. Hallelujah. Elder M. Russell Ballard shared this one. There is no one perf there is no one perfect way to be a good mother. Each mother has different challenges, different skills and abilities, and certainly different children. Amen. The choice is different and unique for each mother and each family. And then Washington Irving says, quoted this, he says, A mother is the truest friend we have when trials heavy and sudden fall upon us, when adversity takes the place of prosperity, when friends who rejoice with us in our sunshine desert us. When trouble thickens around us, still will she cling to us and endeavor by her kind precepts and counsel to dissipate the clouds of darkness and cause peace to return to our hearts. I really love those quotes. They're a special blessing and I pray that you receive them as well. Amen. Amen. Mothers are measured by more than just the ability to bear children. They are measured by their perseverance, by their faith, by their obedience and their worship. Amen. Let's read 1 Samuel. Chapter 1. There was a certain man from Ramathim, a Zupite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jer Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tuhu, the son of Zub, and Ephrathite. He had two wives, one was called Hannah and the other Penina. Penina had children, but ha Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh. 
where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife Peninnah and all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord as she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of the great anguish, out of great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home in Ramah, at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifices to the Lord and to fulfill his vows, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what's best, do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband, told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull and an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's a powerful, powerful uh, word there. Amen? Amen? Today I want to touch on four things of motherhood. Motherhood requires perseverance. Motherhood requires faith. And motherhood requires obedience. Motherhood inspires a, a response, a response of worship. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And it's so important to remember that. Amen. Praise God. As I shared with you, a mother, a mother, mothers are measured by more than just the ability to bear children. 
They're measured by their perseverance. Fight through, work through. Amen? It may be difficult at times. It may be a struggle at times. But you have to continue, you know, to persevere. Amen? Amen. Um, so they're measured by their perseverance, by their faith, by their obedience, and their and by their worship. Amen? A Spanish proverb reads, an ounce of mother, an ounce of mother is worth a ton of priests. What it refers to is the depth of direction and encouragement and love that is endowed upon mothers as they raise their children. A young mother and father felt it was time to tell their 10 year old son the facts of life. They took books out of the library and prepared themselves for any questions he might ask. At the end of a lengthy chat, he looked confused. If you have any questions, they said, please ask them. There's no silly questions. Well, suppose I was married, he said with some embarrassment. My wife was pregnant and I had to rush her to the hospital. Okay. They nodded supportively. He asked, can I go through red lights? <laughs> Come on, that's supposed to break the ice here. It just reminded me of one time we were rushing a lady to the hospital. <laughs> um, that nobody to take her to the hospital and they called me and Sister Martha. We didn't even know them that good, but we went over there and we picked up the lady and, and Put her in the back seat, you know, and she was screaming and yelling. She was going to have a baby. And we flew down Rosecrans to Martin Luther King Hospital. That's the nearest hospital to take her to. And we were going through red lights and the cops got us. <laughs> So he pulled over beside me and I said, hey man, this lady's going to have a baby. And he says, oh, don't worry. I mean, and he got in front of me and put his siren on and led us to the hospital. <laughs> and, um, and, um, and it was a real, it was a real serious thing because as soon as she, as soon as she got out of my car, they put her on the gurney or the wheelchair or gurney, I believe they took her. She had the baby as soon as she entered the hospital doors. The baby just came. So I'm glad he just waited that long. Praise God. Over 100 years ago, G.K. Chesterton wrote this about mothers. Babies need not to be taught a trade, but to be introduced to a world. Our race has thought it worthwhile to cast this burden on women in order to keep common sense in the world. How can it be an important career to tell other people's children about mathematics? A small career to tell one's own children about the universe. A woman's function is laborious, not because it is a minute, but because it is gigantic. Amen? Amen. Praise God. As we share the story from Samuel, the story of, of um, Hannah is very interesting, her story. And like I said, there's a couple of things we have to see in there that a mother requires perseverance. That's such an obvious principle. It is like saying that mechanics need strong arms or those who sow strong eyes to see. But look at Hannah's story. She met and fell in love with a young man named Elkanah. Things looked wonderful for a while, but then it seemed obvious that she could not conceive and would never be able to have a child of her own. Perhaps there was great stress that developed in their marriage and Elkanah took an extreme measure in order to have an heir. He took another wife, Nina, and had children with her, that Elkanah was a good man, so be, seems to be indicated by verse 3, amen? But the difficulty for Hannah definitely increased. 
As you read the verses, you see the hurt she experienced, not just once, but time and time and time again. Every time they went to Shiloh to annually give thanks to God for his blessings, she would be confronted with her childlessness. It would be there in front of her. It says in verse 6 that Penina would provoke her bitterly or irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. Both of these women teach us much about perseverance. Penina failed to persevere under blessing. Amen? It's not when you have that you should make fun of others that don't have what it means. She grew haughty and insolent. Hannah also failed to persevere for under affliction she grew sad and discontented. Motherhood is not an easy task. It demands the perseverance that often comes through failures. Hello? Are you here with me? And the second one, motherhood requires faith. It's often the challenge from someone who loves us that causes us to exercise the faith that resides in us. Elkanah, her husband, he sees his wife's distress and challenges her with what to us seems almost a painfully obvious question. In verse 8, he asks Hannah, Why do you weep and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Is this just another case of a husband being, you know, not understanding? He doesn't see the obvious. Amen. I don't, I don't really believe that. Amen. This simple observation called her attention. Not only, not only the good character of her husband, one who was better than ten sons, but also to the greater goodness of God's character. Amen. It called her to go and make things right with God. Motherhood requires a faith that not only puts the outcome of events into God's hands, it also invites us to ask for the impossible. We don't know when Hannah chose to make this plea, bargain with God, but it was a desperate one. Amen. She asked she would ask that she could have a child and then she would determine to surrender that child at a very young age forever. To be separated from her, to leave home and to be raised at the temple. She asked for a miracle that she could surrender her son, her only son. Amen. And before God as an act of trust and worship. So when she does go to Shiloh, the place where the temple is, amen, and she prays, O Lord of hosts, it's a term that emphasizes God's greatness, his sovereignty, amen. It refers to God as commander-in-chief of all of heaven's hosts, amen. Mothers, you have Doubtless had your faith tested many, many times in the past. Amen? Maybe in the exercise of it, you were ridiculed as Hannah was. Yet the result of exercised faith will bring peace to a troubled heart. After she had poured out her heart, her, her heart and her soul in prayer before the Lord, after she had declared her request to God, she left it before Him in faith. Look at the impact that the faith had, that the woman went on her way and she ate and she was no longer sad. Amen? Amen. The circumstances had not changed a bit. Nothing changed. But something changed in her. Hannah, Hannah, because of her faith in her omniscient and sovereign God, called her to pray in a way that she poured out her soul. All that she could not carry, she could, she could and would. Amen? Mothers, your faith is not only the source of your peace in raising children, it's what prompts you to cry out to God when you cannot change that which appears to be about to defeat you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mothers require obedience. The obedience of Hannah was all about her submitting her will to, to her God and, her, and to her husband. 
She wouldn't, sub she wouldn't submit to either if she didn't trust in their ability, amen, and desire to care for her. Her obedience is seen as radical in the sense that she was willing to give her only son away. And he'd serve in the temple all his days, all the days of his life. It was probably at the age of three that she took young Samuel and in obedience of what she had vowed, she gave him back to God. That's an extreme action that pulls at every parent's heart. She dedicated him to the Lord. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is dedicated to the Lord. Verse 28 of chapter 1. Mm -hmm. The obedience of motherhood will call you to train your children even before the age of three. The obedience of motherhood calls you to be faithful to your vows, your wedding vows, your vows of dedication, the following through of your promises to God. Whatever they are, obedience has a price. It's the submission of your will in the pursuit of holiness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Motherhood inspires a response of worship. And we see that in chapter 2, where it says in there, Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like you. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now think about this for a second. She made a vow to God. She was hurt. She was broken. And she made a vow to God. And God gave her what she asked for. Praise God. It reminds me of when um, um, this just came to my heart when we have our yearly prayer on New Year's Eve. Um, one um, one of those prayers night, Amber was praying for a child. Amen. And uh, she was crying with her heart. She wanted a, a, a baby. <laughs> this was on our pray out the old and pray in the new. And that year the new came in because that was the year that Isabella was born, conceived and born. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, and there's many times when we pray, amen, and just like with all children, they have their ups, they have their downs, amen, and there's challenges. Um, but uh, it's, um, it was a prayer, a prayer that God honored, amen. And, um, and, uh, you know, like we all did, they came, I remember we dedicated Hannah to the, I mean, Bella, Hannah and Bella, but we dedicated uh, Bella to the Lord as well, right here, I believe, amen. All the family here, it was just a wonderful, wonderful thing, time, amen? amen. Praise God. Motherhood inspires a response of worship. Now that sounds like a paradox. How could, how could two o'clock in the morning feeding inspire worship, amen? You have to take care of baby. Or how could diapers, skinned knees, or teens who are out late and you have no idea where they are inspire worship? Well, it can. Amen. When the kids used to stay out late, I used to see Martha. You know, we had a curfew and they had to be in at a certain time. Now, it was pretty a pretty lenient one at first. And, um, but Sister Martha would be at the door, you know. She couldn't see out, but she would be reaching up like this to try to see out the door. And she was always, it was like an anxiety in her or something, that she was always wondering where they are, hoping something didn't happen, you know. And she was always looking, you know. And then finally I just said, that's it. Amen. You have to go to bed. <laughs> um, but that's a mother. Amen. And... Um, Well, there's a controversial, controversial story after this. But anyways, they came in one time, I forget who it was, came in about 10 minutes late after the curfew. So then the curfew was changed. 
amen, to a really earlier time. And, and they were told, well, if you guys don't like the curfew, you can, you can move out and go find a place where you can stay out as long as you want. But while you're here, you're going to respect the curfew. Why? Because I didn't want my wife to be worried about them. Amen? Mm-hmm. And they weren't doing nothing bad. Everything they were doing was all related to church all the time, mostly. Amen? But it's still, you know, it, it gets a parent, a mother to worry. Amen? Mm-hmm. Hello? Yeah. A four-year-old and a six-year-old presented their mom with a house plant. They had to use their own money. And she was thrilled. The older child said with a sad face, there was a, ba- there was a, a, a bouquet that we wanted to give you at the flower shop. It was real pretty, but it, but it was too expensive. It had a ribbon on it that said, rest in peace. And we thought it would be just perfect for you, mom, because you're always asking for a little peace so that you can rest. <laughs> There's definitely trying times, mothers, but the wonder of the child that God has given to you, the wonder of this little one or little ones to whom you alone in all the world are the mother of. This everlasting wonder inspires us all a response of worship. When Hannah, when Hannah left her son with Eli, the priest, at the age of three, her son her only son was separated from her. Amen? But that was the vow she made. Amen? And it's kind of hard when you pray and you really want something and then to give it back. Amen? But she kept her, her vow. Amen? There's many ways that this concept or this principle can be taken in the things of God. What you sow, you reap. Amen? And so it's very important for us to remember, you know, when we vow to God, He doesn't take it lightly. Amen? God takes everything serious we tell Him, we talk to Him about. Amen? You want to change? God will help you to change. You want your children to be touched by God, God will touch them. You want your marriage, your relationship to be touched by God, God will touch it. He'll do things. Amen. Some of the difficult times come when maybe you're the one that has to change. Hello. Because then our pride rises up. Because usually we always want to say, you know, we want to be like Adam and say, the woman you gave me, she gave me and I did eat. He just kicked out his responsibility there. Amen? Amen. To be obedient to God. Amen. You love the Lord today? Amen. Hallelujah. When Hannah left her little son with Eli the priest at the age of three, her son, her only son, was separated from her. But the interesting thing that I got out of this is how could she know that one day God would do this very same thing? He too would give away his son. His only son. That life and forgiveness, that life and forgiveness of sin would come to all who would receive him. In the midst of this difficult and trying moment, she turned again in her great, she turned again to her great and sovereign God, the Lord of hosts, and she worshiped. She worshiped. I don't think Hannah is some kind of superwoman or that she's the original hard-hearted Hannah. Amen? Her prayer is remarkable for there is no petition in it for her son, Samuel. No specific prayer request to keep him warm or to watch over him or to keep him safe. I mean, that's what you folks, mothers, would pray for your kids, right? She doesn't pray anything like that because she knows into whose hands she's giving him and leaving him. 
She knows that God has those things covered. Hello? Praise God. Instead, she pours out praise to God for who he is. She proclaims his boundaries over their lives as she worships him. Matthew Henry once wrote, praise is our rent, our tribute. We are unjust if we do not pay it. Hannah, in the midst of her hopes of her loss, poured out praise before God. Amen? Amen. I'm going to share the last part of, of, of uh, portions of um, Samuel chapter 2. Praise God. She pays rent. She pays tribute to the Lord of hosts for what he's done for her. Amen. She says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is like the Lord, for there is no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Hallelujah. Talk no more. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is God. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken. And those who stumble, and those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has been has borne seven. And she who has has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust, and he lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princesses and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his children, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength, for by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. And he will give strength to his king, his anointed horn. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wanted to share that story because it really touched me for Mother's Day. Amen. How she sacrificed, and I seen Hannah through a different lens. Even how her struggle began, because we never really knew. You know, a lot of people talk about, um, well, this man had two wives. That's all they focus on. Today, it's against the law. It's a big sin, right? But the purpose behind it was very evident. Now, when you look at it, that he was. She was his first love. He was her love. But she couldn't have children. And just like Abram, Abraham and Sarah, they, um, you know, Sarah said, well, take my, my um, servant and bring up children through her. Amen. That's probably what happened. And the same thing that happened with um, um, Sarah's a servant, she became more proud and would and mean to her her to Sarah. Amen. And the same thing was happening here. Amen. So year after year you see her struggle. Amen. She went from being the most important in this man's life to Amen. But her husband tried to cheer her up and encourage her. Amen. And that cheering and encouragement led her. It, it did something in her heart that made her go to God. To seek the Lord. At the end of the day, she received the blessing, didn't she? Hello? Amen. And after she gave her child to the Lord for all the days of his life, to become a great man in history, to become a great man in, in Israel, to anoint the first and the second kings of Israel. First King Samuel and then King David. Amen. Um, that's what this child was. A child that was prayed for. So you never know what your child will become. But if you keep inspiring them to, to greatness. 
Amen. Now, greatness not in the not in the understanding of the world's means of greatness. Amen. Today, the world wants to form and make our children into what they call greatness. But greatness in the Lord, serving the Lord, is way better. Amen. Amen. There's many things that I've been good at, some really good at, but nothing compares to where God has me at today. Amen. 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 And I praise God for that. Today I want to give a, a word of encouragement to the moms, and it's found in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, <clears throat> through 32, <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29, it says, He gives strength to the weary, and increases the power of the weak, even young people or youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. And isn't it so interesting how, how the young people, teenagers, say, oh, I'm tired, oh, I can't, you know. Hello? And you're, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot older. I, I get out there and I can do these things. And, and I see Sister Martha and all of her energy. I mean, this lady has energy. She's just like, Yesterday I couldn't find her. <laughs> she was she was working in the backyard. And then I went back there to give her a, a little kiss, right? Chocolate kiss. <laughs> and um and I couldn't find her and I'm walking, go back in the house, I look through every room, I come back, where the heck is she going? I went in the garage and and she's not in there. Well, now she's in the front yard working. She's in the dirt out there digging up her weeds in the garden there. Amen? And, um, but she has energy to do all these things. Amen? Hello? And I know a lot, of, a lot of, I've seen Sister Amber out there as well, you know, and Sister Betty. And, um, they just keep working and probably Sister Maria también. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, she goes walking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, but anyways, God gives you strength. Amen? Amen? It says, even the youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Amen. And that's exactly what Hannah did. Amen? She renewed her strength. Before she wasn't eating, she was sad, she was depressed, she was disgusted, she was hurt, she was broken. Amen? Amen? But after she went into the temple of the Lord and she prayed to God, she renewed her strength. And the Bible says she came out a different person. Everything had changed inside of her. Had her situation changed? No. Her situation at that moment was the very same one she went into the temple with. But something inside of her changed. And that's only what God can do. God is the one that can make a change inside of any person. Amen? Amen. A young man, a young girl, a young woman, a, yo a young man. Amen? Hello? Amen. An old man, an old woman. Hello? It's only God that can make those changes. Hello? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And it says that, that, that mothers will soar on the wings like eagles. Amen. Hallelujah. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hello. Now it doesn't say moms. I put that in there. But that's the way I see them. That's the way I, I feel. You know. Hello. Moms go through so much. I remember all that my mother went through. Because of my dad's. You know. Issues. Sometimes there was not nothing. But mom would go and find something. Amen. Amen. Sometimes she would go and wait in the lines. Of, when we lived up north, they had these, these churches. They were like missions. Amen. And they would give out food. They would give out. A, and she would stand in line there to give food for her kids for hours. Amen. We didn't know what she was doing. We were all fussing. Why do we have to be? Why? You know, we were just complainers. Like the children of Israel. But my mom would do that for us. Yeah. 
Sometimes things became very messed up and we became older and started giving a hard time, me and my brothers and sister. <laughs> We're not going to leave her out. <laughs> she may be the youngest, but she got she had her own load of problems and troubles, just like we ended up getting in trouble. And no matter what, whether innocent or guilty, mom was in our corner. Amen? Yes. She would fight. At times, she would get lawyers. She would do whatever she had to, but she would fight for her children. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. She would let us know when we were wrong. Amen? And it was a, it was a good, a good, um, Thing, but I'm just I just share that because you know a mom's love is very strong. Amen. But the thing is, when we became too too much of a handful for her, she said, I prayed for you guys. And I just, you know, she wasn't even a Christian at that time. She was just a, a believer in faith and her faith. Um, but she said, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't have the strength to go through all this with you guys anymore. So I just gave you all to the Lord. I gave you to God. Yeah. And ever since then, God has been. Giving her strength. And changes did happen. Amen. All of us continue to grow and. You know, some of us were still in our issues and things, but God brought us to where we're at today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So mothers, mothers will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah. When you pass, Isaiah 43, 2 says this. Mothers, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Amen? Amen. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. That's a promise from God, mothers, that it's not going to get too heavy for you. You're not going to get drowned. And, you're, and you know, when you pass through the fire, it's not going to harm you. Amen. You're going to go through struggles, uh, struggles as a mother. Amen? <laughs> but you're going to persevere and you're not going to give up. And you're going to come through because God is with you. Amen. And God will not abandon you nor leave you. Amen? Amen. Jesus. Praise God. But you have to give it to him. Amen. You have to give it to him. And when you give something. If you give me something. Don't be looking for it later on. It's mine. Hello. Amen. Are you here with me? Amen. Don't come and say. Oh give it back to me. No. Amen. No you gave it to me. And that's how. When we should give. Things to God. Amen. You give it. And you leave it with him. Then. There comes the peace that passes all understanding. Hello? Amen. Because you no longer own that problem, that issue. I mean, it's still your situation, your circumstances, and your children, or whatever it is, but, but you've given it to God. Hello? That way, then there's no more anxiety, no more worry. Oh, but pastor, but no, 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 but pastor, nothing. We just talk to God. Hello? Praise God. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, he says. Isaiah 42, 3. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. That's a promise from God, mother. You can take that to the bank with you today. It says, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Wow. Mothers, can you receive that today? Amen. You will not be ablaze. That, that's God giving you a promise, mothers. But see, those are the kind of promises that you need to, to, to grab onto, to cling onto, and not let go of. When things get difficult, when things get challenging, when it comes on day after day, or maybe year after year, just like with Hannah, she didn't give up. Yeah, it affected her at first. But thanks to good counsel, amen, she was able to see and put things in perspective and said, I know who can fix this. I know who can really fix this. Now you can go to, to shrinks, you can go to the 
the doctor, you can start taking medications, you can start doing this, and all those things are the kind of things that this world offers you. But if you go to the God and you touch him like the woman with the issue of blood, amen, you will see a miracle. Hello? Amen. You will see a miracle. Moms, that's for you. Hello? Also in Psalm 34, 9, it says, For the Lord, fear the Lord, you mothers, for those who fear him lack nothing. Amen? It says the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Amen? And that was the one thing that I could say about my mom, is my mom was always the person that would always tell us, at a very little age, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And she had faith in God. She trusted in God. Amen. Now, when I found faith in God and God came into my life, amen, she didn't understand it because, like, again, that's she just knew it from her limited understanding. Amen. But she had faith in God because I always took care of her needs and she always... She always took care of her kids and grandchildren. Hello? Yeah. Are you here with me? So, so very important to remember your moms today. Amen? And then finally, when things get heavy, moms, when things get too overstressed and challenging, Jesus says this to you in Matthew eleven twenty-eight: 28. Come to me. Is he telling you to... To go to anybody else? Amen? Is he telling you to go to all? Oh, is he telling you to take a? No. He's telling you, come to me. Because there's some moms that they can't handle the stress. They start taking tranquilizers. Or <laughs> Are you here with me? To handle life. To handle the responsibilities. Sometimes they go out and they do other crazy things um, but Jesus says in Matthew 11 he says come to me did Hannah go to the Lord Amen. did things change in her life mothers yes. did she become a mother yes. hello yes. praise God come to me all of you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest how many of you moms need to come to the Lord today? How many of you need that rest? How many of you are weary? How many of the burden has gotten so heavy? Praise God. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. When he says yoke, he's not talking about egg yoke. Egg yoke. Amen. A yoke is, like I explained it before, is something they put on the animals to keep them together to plow their fields. Amen? But this yoke, he's telling you to put it on with him. He will help you plow the field of life. You'll be going and you'll be with him. You're not stopping or changing. He's going to help you to get the field plowed in your life, your family, with your children. Amen? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you're a mother today and you're here, I'd like you to come up here, please, and we're going to just say a prayer for you before we dismiss in service. Praise God. I want you to come with the heart that Hannah had, though. Just come up here and, you know, give yourself that, that space here, you know, and, and um, praise God. Come up with the heart that Hannah had, you know, and seek the Lord for whatever it is right now. Moms, you can just lift your hands up to the Lord right now, right there, and just start crying out to the Lord. You know, the Bible says that Hannah prayed, her lips were moving, but nothing came out. And right now, you can share and you can pray in that way. Amen? Praise God. There's a, there's a need in your life, moms. 
I know every one of you, and I know that there's a great need in your life, and I pray, I pray, and we're going to be praying for you in a moment, amen. But I want to give you a moment to just express your heart to the Lord, amen. Praise God. And folks that are out there, don't just look, pray for these moms that are up here today, these champions, these heroes, amen. Praise God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I lay all of these mothers, Lord God, at your feet, Lord God. I commit them to you, Lord God. I pray for you to give them, Father God, the promises, Father God, of Isaiah 40, Father God, and Isaiah 43 and Psalms 34, Lord God. They have come, Lord, in obedience to Matthew 20, 11, 28, Lord God. They've come to you, Lord God. And you know what each and every one of their battles and struggle is, Father God. You know they're seeking peace in a very chaotic world, Lord. I pray for you to give them that peace right now, Lord God. I pray for you to give them renewed strength, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. I just pray, Lord God, that you help them to persevere, Lord God. Help them to have faith, Father God. Yes, Father God, help them to worship you, Lord God. Praise your holy name, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Help them to be obedient to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Help each and every mother here, Lord God, and those that are watching, um, Father God, touch their lives, touch those moms out there, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you would say the word here and people miles away or in a different location would be touched. So I pray the same thing for those mothers that will be watching and listening through uh, Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. Lord, touch them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, for honoring your word today and filling each and every one of these mothers with your strength, with your strength, with your strength, with your strength, and with your Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We got these, these little gifts for the moms, and it's just a cup to remember that you love. Amen. Amen. So you can grab one if you want. Praise God. Amen. Well, that's a Mother's Day revival, do you think? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we may not have had as many mothers as we've had in the past, but I praise God for each and every one of the mothers Amen. that are here. Amen. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Well, that's our service today, and that's the word of God, and I pray that you continue to and that's the whole purpose of today, is mothers, think revival, think renewal, <clears throat> amen? Don't think every day is just another day, that the load is just another load for this day. No, every day is gonna be revival in your life. You're gonna be excited about your children. You're gonna be excited about your marriage. You're gonna be excited about your, about your home. Amen. Hey, when challenges come, when difficulties come, you're still going to be excited. You're going to be saying, Lord, opportunity, opportunity. Amen. Amen. Hello. Amen. Never feel helpless or never feel alone. God is with you. It says it right here in the word. Amen. It says it right here in the word. All he says is come to him with it. Amen. Amen. And he will lift the burden off your shoulders. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today.